food. But if you tell, I want to go to see Narendra Modi ji, will they allow you to see Narendra Modi? Never and never. You will have to have so many contacts in the Delhi to BJP uh, members and so many political leaders. Then only you may get a glimpse of Modi maybe for five minutes. Understood? Without contacts, you cannot see Modi. So you cannot even see Modi for uh, five minutes without contact. What to speak of Bhagwan? Bhagwan is not your order carrier that he will manifest by your uh, desire. You know, you come before me, Krishna. You know, not like that. So hard logic is not recommended. So ordinary practical knowledge may appear by means of mundane intelligence, but such intelligence is not the birthplace of bhakti. Thus, it is seen that an intelligent, unintelligent child who has no knowledge may go to become, go on to become a person of absolute faith or a high class devotee as a natural consequence of his sanskaras, either from his past lives or from his recent activities. Conversely, a greatly intelligent person may be an atheist. Thus, it is suddenly the heart that is the birthplace of bhakti and not the mind and intelligence. This is the purport of the word Rudh Vapre. So this is very nice, like Gurudev. Gurudev from childhood was a pure devotee of Krishna. And he was sitting and he was chanting Ram, 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 Krishna, 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 Krishna. When Gurudev was a child, he once went to one festival on the bank of the Ganga and there Anumanji's festival was being celebrated in honor of Hanumanji. And his Gurudev's father, Baleshwarna Tiwari, also was wrestling there in the arena because he was also a good wrestler and a player. And Gurudev first time heard the Sankirtan. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Thousands and thousands of people on the bank of the Ganges were doing loud kirtan. Then Gurudev was wonderstruck. First time in his life he had heard the Sankirtan. He was so ecstatic. But in Bihar, the Mahamantra is sung with Hare Ram first and then Hare Krishna. So they don't sing Mahamantra, they sing some other mantra, that is Hare Ram. Gurudev has always taught us that first you must sing Hare Krishna. But in Gurudev's Bihar, people, when Gurudev heard the mantra, it was the other way around, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. Because that is the custom there. But still Gurudev was overwhelmed because it is still the holy name of the Lord. So Gurudev told that when his mother would make him sit down, he would not cry. So he was called Bholana, king of the great simple-hearted persons like Shiva. Simple-hearted devotees like Lord Shiva. So Gurudev was like Bholana, like Lord Shiva. And Gurudev from childhood began to start chanting Ram, Ram, Ram. He didn't know why chanting Ram, Ram, Ram. But as a child also he was chanting the name of God. Understand? And Gurudev had a friend. He was a devotee of Krishna. And Gurudev was that time a devotee of Ram. So Gurudev always used to take the side of Ram. He said, Your, our Ram is so simple hearted, so kind and having no duplicity. But your Krishna has so much duplicity. He has a cheating propensity. He steals the clothes of the gopis. He lies all the time. So Gurudev liked Ram more. He didn't like so much Krishna in the beginning. Why? Because Krishna's character is very difficult to understand unless you are in Guru Parampara. But later on, Gurudev was attracted to Krishna when he read the biography of Nimbarka Charji, the teachings and precepts of Nimbarka Charji. Then Gurudev started chanting Krishna Nam also. And then he came in touch with Gaudiya Math, the teachers of Gaudiya Math. He became a staunch Krishna devotee. But Gurudev used to read Ramayana. Even in childhood, when he was 15, 16 years old, and tears used to flow from his eyes, and he used to weep hours and hours when he heard about Sita being sent to exile by Ram, or Sita was tested for her chastity, and Sita entering into the womb of her mother, the Prithvi Devi, Gurudev used to weep for hours and hours. He had darshan of Sita, Ram, Lakshman, Anuman, Darbar also. He touched the, he, when he went to touch the feet of Ramchandra, then that vision disappeared, that dream disappeared. But Gurudev was very ecstatic. So as a child, you can see simple-hearted Gurudev, but he never thought through his mind, but always by his heart. That's why a small child like Gurudev had pure devotion from young age.
But even a very big elderly person, very learned, who has done PhD or MBA or maybe MBBS or doctorate, uh, but he cannot, he cannot understand. They always challenge Bhagwan. They always, always challenge Bhagwan. So, um, Lord Shiva has told, "Aham vedmi shuko vetti vyaso vetti ne vetti va bhaktya bhagavatam grahiyam na cha buddhaya na cha tikaya." Lord Shiva told that I know Bhagavatam. Sukhdev Goswami also knows Bhagavatam. But Vyasadeva knows or not, I don't know. Because Vyasa is Bhagavan. How can he understand what is going on in the heart of the devotees? Bhagavatam cannot be understood by intelligence or speculation. By only by bhakti you can understand Bhagavatam. So this bhakti is function of the heart. Not of the mind or speculative mind. <clears throat> Once actually Dandi Maharaj told me a story that there was a conference in Vatican. In that conference, there were many Nobel laureates. So one Nobel laureate, he told that, yes, um, there is no God. And if there is a God, we will replace that God by the equation of physics. We will discover one very fabulous equation of physics and we will replace the God by that equation. So we will run the whole world through that equation of physics. No need of God. We'll kick out the God. But then another Nobel laureate told that we will. Uh, then no, no, the another Nobel laureate told that God exists and He is a merciful God. They asked him, "Why do you believe that God exists?" He said, "Look at the atom of water molecule. Water molecule has one hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. And the angle between this oxygen atom and two hydrogen atom is 108 degrees." But when the water freezes, this angle increases. So the volume of the ice is more than the volume of water. So density of the ice is less than the density of water. So the ice will float on the water. And that's why these so many ice bulbs, they float on the water. This is due to the anomalous behavior of water. So he said that God exists and is a very merciful God. He causes this angle between hydrogen atoms and oxygen atom increase and that's why aquatics and so many fish and aquatic beings they are not uh, they don't meet their watery grave because uh, they are not crushed to their death by the icebergs so he understood through his simple faith not through, through his heart he understood that god exists not by challenging mood uh, challenging mood you cannot understand god you should have a very simple heart to understand God. Uh, so here, here the words Nava Bhakti should be understood either as a Nava Udita, newly awakened tender devotion or Navada Bhakti, a ninefold devotion of Bhakti, which begins with Shravan and Kirtan and which has been described in Srimad Bhagavatam. So in Sanskrit, Nava means nine. <coughs> the word Nava means nine and Nava also means freshly sprouted. <coughs> So, Nava, Nava Bhakti means freshly sprouted Bhakti. Means you have received recently Diksha or Shiksha from a high class Guru and your Bhakti is now just sprouting. It has not born any flowers. It has not born any fruit. But it is, you are in a neophyte, baby devotee. Understand? That means Nava Bhakti. Also, Nava Bhakti means uh, nine types of... Nava is a, you know, overloaded word. Means it has two meanings. One is fresh, new, Nava means new, like in English they say new, that is actually English language is coming also from Sanskrit. So Nava means actually new, the word new comes from word Nava in Sanskrit. And Nava also means nine, nine also begins with N, because this nine or Nava, this certainly there is actually uh, uh, mother of all languages is Sanskrit. There are so many words you see in English. That they are exactly like the Sanskrit words, the Sanskrit counterparts. So, Nava Bhakti, like Navina Shri Bhakti, Nava Kanaka Gavarak Pratipatim, Navaran Neshredi, Nava Sura Sarit Vata Balitam, Navina Shri Radha, Harila Samayot Kirtana Vidim, Nava Divam Mande, Karanavadam, Nava Ruchim. Understand? So, in this word, Prabhupada Sarasati Path is glorifying Navadhyam using the word Nava. Nava means nine islands. 
and Navina Shri Bhakti, new devotion. Understand? So, in this verse also, the word Nava is used uh, interchangeably as nine and new. Nava means new as well as nine. Understand? So, Bhakti is of nine types and fresh Bhakti, new Bhakti is also called Nava Bhakti. <clears throat> So in Shivad Bhagavatam, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnuho, Smaranam Parasevanam, Archanam Mandanam Dasam Sakya Matma Nivedana. We are on page number 12, second paragraph. The ninefold system of bhakti is comprised of hearing about chanting and remembering Bhagavan's names, forms, qualities, and pastimes, serving his feet, worshipping him, praying to him, being his servant, being his friend, and submitting one's very self to him. So here, Vishnu. Another important thing is Vishnu. Vishnu means dual case. English has only two cases. Singular case and plural case. This English, two persons are going. One person is going. Is going, are going. Means singular case, one person is going, then you say is going or I am going. One person is going. Understood. But Two persons or three persons or five or ten, a hundred million, one trillion, you say, are going. One million people are going, uh, one million persons are going, two persons are going. So English has only singular case and plural case. But in Sanskrit, there is singular case, dual case, and plural case. So dual case example is Vishnu. Shravanam Kritanam Vishnu. Two Vishnus. What are the two Vishnus? Gurudev, who is the supreme personality of servitorship, he is also he is also the Ashray Vishnu, Ashray Bhagwan, and Bhagwan, Bhagwan Shri Krishna, who is the Vishay Bhagwan, or the supreme personality of Godhead. Understand? So there are two type of Vishnus. So Shravanam, hearing the pastimes of Bhagwan, name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Bhagwan, then we have to. Chant also, remember also, this we discussed. Serving his feet. Padasevanam. Padasevanam has two meanings. Padasevanam means massaging the feet of Bhagwan Shri Krishna. Like Lakshmi Devi is always massaging the feet of Krishna. Or Padasevanam also means serving Bhagwan by one's lotus feet. Now, how to serve Bhagwan by one's lotus feet? Pada means feet. Means we circumambulating the dham. Now, now the parikrama is coming. The devotees will walk in the Singapalli and so many places, bare feet. The roads are cold, the roads are very hot, the feet are burning, uh, aching. That is also Pada Sivan. Pradakshina Parikrama is also very, very important. Anya Sthane Kurtam Papam, Kirta Sthane Pranashyati. Kirta Sthane Kurtam Papam, Vajraleko Vamishyati. Kirta Sthane Kurtam Papam, Mathuraya Pranashyati. Mathuraya Pradam Papam Pradakshinaya Pranashati Mathura Bhumi Mahapunya Yatra Papam Matishtati. Understand? Means if you commit sinful activities in say Durban or Johannesburg, then they will be eradicated if you visit a holy place like Kashi or Ayodhya, Prayag, like this, Pushkar. But if you commit sinful activities in Kashi or Tirupati, the holy places like Kashi and Tirupati, what will happen? They will be eradicated when you do bhakti in Mathura. But if you commit sinful activities and aparas in Mathura, what will happen? Then, if you commit sinful activities in Mathura, then you have to do parikrama of Mathura or Navadibda. Then those offenses will go away. But if you commit sinful activities in your own city, <clears throat> then they will be pardoned. But if you commit sinful activities in the dham, then they become like a line in the stone. Line imprinted in the stone. Vajralaika Bhavishya. That's why we have to be very careful that in holy places we don't commit sinful activities. We go there with single-minded intention of doing bhakti, no prajalpa, no criticism. We should not try to criticize anyone in the dham. Especially holy places and dham, we, should, we have to be hundred times more careful. The good results also come very quickly in the dham by doing bhajan. But bad results also are magnified million times. Understand? So that is, uh, the guru sevaks have to be very careful. If you do proper service to guru or deities, quick result will come and will make rapid advancement. But if you commit offense to that same guru or deities or Vaishnavas we are serving, then the result will also be very, very terrible. Understand? Like for example, if you 
harass an ordinary human being that is a big sin but million time more reaction will come to you if you harass a vaishnava because vaishnava is so rare and so glorious bhagwan loves him so much so par sevanam then there is one process is worshiping him that is called archanam the word archanam comes from the word archi like king vena was a very sinful person and he was against vishnu so the sadhus they became very angry with king vena and they they said they killed him by the sound vibration the sound vibration was hum and the sound vibration hum he was killed understand so you by if you say om you are blessing someone but if you say hum you are killing someone the sound is sound can make you or mar you can kill you or uh, give a long life so when vena was killed his uh, body was churned and his feet were churned his thighs were rubbed against each other and out of those thighs one boy and one girl came out the boy was incarnation of bhagwan called prithu and from this word prithu the name of this earth planet is called prithvi and then along with him another girl also manifested she was very beautiful she was incarnation of lakshmi and prithu was incarnation of vishnu so that girl's name was archi so archi and prithu got married understand and they ruled the earth as the king and queen of the earth so that that's why from the word archi the name archana comes archana means deity worship worshiping of the lord archan so archan means archan paddhati uh, have you finished your archan you asked the pujari archan means deity worship this comes from the word archi now the next process of bhakti is praying to him vandanam so vandanam is acharya is akrur maharaj akrur was actually from krishna dynasty he was a relative of krishna he was uncle of krishna he was sent by kamsa to bring krishna and balram for the bow sacrifice so when he came to brindavan he saw the footprints of krishna everywhere balram's footprints everywhere he recognized them and he began to pray to the footprints of krishna and balram he offered very eloquent prayers and that process is called vandanam glorifying the supreme lord vandanam that's why the acharya of the process of vandan so nine different acharya for nine different types of devotional service then the next process is comes that being the serving his servant kapivatir das say servitorship in of hanuman is incomparable hanuman is serving 24 hours a day hanuman is not taking any rest hanuman doesn't know any rest so he is the best of the servants of shri ramachandra understand so dasyam dasya kapivatir dasya servitorship but friendship is arjuna arjun is sakhya to arjuna because arjun married krishna's sister and krishna he always supported arjuna their friendship is well known and he explained to him bhagavad gita also hmm. so that is one type of devotion service called sakhyam but this sakhya of arjuna with krishna is sambram sakhya sambram means there is some odd reverence also involved there because when krishna showed the gigantic virat rupa universal form arjun he forgot that he is my friend and he was trembling out of fear but this thing doesn't happen to madhu mangal sudam dam vasudam stop krishna bhrunga kokil so in vrindavan the love and affection between the sakhas the friends of krishna and krishna is free from any type of odd reverence it is surcharged with human like sweetness and then hmm, submitting once very self to him this is called atma nivedan atma nivedan means like offering everything to bhagwan this is done by bali maharaj like krishna came to cheat bali maharaj so he first step he cross the entire earth planet measure the entire earth planet the second step he measure the upper planet system and he said where would i put my third step then you have promised me three step of land but you only gave me two step of land and bali maharaj said oh lord what is greater the charity is greater or the charity the person who is giving charity is greater the lord said the person who is giving charity is greater than the charity itself okay so i am now offered a charity so far but now i am offering my very own self who is the giver of charity so please place your lotus feet on my head 
and in this way lord sent him to sutal planet so bali maharaj is sarvatma snapane uh, bali raghut krishna tirishan so we should try to offer everything to bala bhagwan like bali maharaj understand so once again i'll take one small break arek uh, Hare Krishna. Sorry for the interruption. So, so Bali Maharaj, he belonged to the country called Bolivia, and that's why the Bolivia is named after Bali Maharaj. Sarvatma Snapanam. So Bali Maharaj, he surrendered everything to Bhagwan. Actually, Bhagwan showed mercy to Bali Maharaj only because he was the grandson of Prahlad. Really speaking, the, it is the glory of Prahlad only. So, because you cannot offer anything to Bhagwan, everything belongs to Bhagwan anyways. So, what you can give to Bhagwan? Um, so, but Ambarish Maharaj did all these nine types of devotional services, and nine processes all he followed, and he got perfection. So, anyways, despite there being many other limbs of devotional service, Navada Bhakti is truly the best sadhan to bring about the awakening of Prema. So in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and the condensed study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu by Vishnu Thakur, 64 limbs of devotional service are explained. Ado Guru Padasha. First, you have to take shelter at the lotus feet of Guru. Tadantaram, Diksha, then initiation, then Shiksha. Then, so like these, 64 limbs are there of Bhakti. But really speaking, Nine limbs are most important. So Mahaprabhu has also told in Chaitanya Charita the next payar. Payar means Bengali verses are called payar. Let's read that payar. Bhajane na madhe sreshtha navavida bhakti Krishna prema krishna dite dhare mahashakti Tara madhe sarva sreshtha nama sankirtana nirapradhe nama laile Paya Prema Dhana Chaitanya Charita Amrut Antalila 4.70 and 71 to Paya. Of the various processes of bhajan, nine types of bhakti are the best for they have the great potency to bestow Krishna Prem and Sri Krishna. Out of these nine practices, chanting the names of Bhagwan, Nama Sankirtan is best of all. If one performs Nama Sankirtan free from offenses, he will certainly attain the most valuable wealth of Prema. So this is very clear here. Vajanera Madhya Sreshta Navabhida Bhakti Krishna Prema Krishna Dite Dare Mahashakti Tara Madhya Sarva Sreshta Nama Sankirtana Nama Sankirtana Nirapradhe Nama Lele Pahit Prema So best processes of devotional service are nine but out of them three are most important hearing, chanting and remembering and among them the most important is Nama Sankirtan. So Nama Sankirtan is the easiest process. And it is the greatest process because it can bestow Krishna Prem and Krishna. We don't want Krishna alone because Kamsa also got Krishna, Uttana also got Krishna, but they had no Prem, so they only tried to kill Krishna. So our aim and object is always Krishna Prem, not just Krishna. Our prayojan or goal of our life is Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Prema. 
So we should always, people ask you, what is the goal of your life? Oh, I want Krishna. No, we don't want Krishna. We don't want Krishna alone. We want Krishna Prem and Krishna, both. Understand? So Krishna Prem come by Nama Sankirtana. Hmm. So there are so many verses about Nama Sankirtana, the glories of Nama Sankirtana. Understand? For example, in Bhagavatam, every day you should recite one verse of Bhagavatam. But not possible because people have a very short memory and they have very little patience. People are most of you are working. Uh, so how would you study entire Bhagavatam? Okay, you cannot study entire Bhagavatam, at least recite one verse every day. At least one verse of Bhagavatam you should recite. Okay, you are too busy to recite even one verse. And okay, at least you should recite one quarter of that verse. Because every verse would have four parts. So at least one verse today I will recite, which is from the prayers of Mother Kunti. Krishna Yavasudevaya Devaki Nandanayacha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Nama. This verse, you should try to remember this verse. Krishna Yavasudevaya Devaki Nandanayacha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Nama. But okay, you say I cannot recite this full verse. I have very little time. Then at least the last part of it, Govindaya Namo Nama, that is also enough. Still you will get Krishna Prem. If you are on one quarter of this verse you utter, and whole day you say, Govindaya Namo Nama, 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 Govindaya Namo Nama. This is Nama Sankirtan. And this is called Nama Sankirtan. So Nama Sankirtan is the Sarva Papa Pranashanam Pranam Dukkha Samrastam Namami Harim Param. Bhagavatam says that if you cannot do anything, then just hold your hand before the duty of Krishna and say Govindaya Namo Nama Hare Krishna. That's enough. Gurudev used to say that if Sankirtan part is going and if the whole Mahamantra will enter someone's ear, he will get Krishna Prem. If he is not able to hear the whole Mahamantra, even the last Hare will enter the ears of the bystander, then he would still get the Prem. Even one name of Krishna, if it enters the ears of someone, then it will go to the heart and cleanse his heart and give Krishna Prem. So those who recite the Krishna Naam, those who meditate on Krishna Naam, those who hear the Krishna Naam, from the lips of pure devotee will certainly get Krishna Prem. So that's why we hear from Gurudev. When Gurudev gives initiation, we Gurudev will utter the holy name, we hear it and repeat after him. Understood. But many Babajis, they say that, oh, Gaudiya they don't speak the Mahamantra in the right ear. Not like that. Right ear or left ear, or both ears. That is the correct process. Uh, you have to hear by both ears. Pravishta Kandana Karana Randrena. So, Namaikasya Namaikasya Vachi Smarana Patagatam Shotra Mulam Gatam Va Shuddham Va Shuddha Vyavita Rahitam Tarethe Vasatya Tacheta Deha Dravanena Dalova Pashanda Madde Nikshiptam Samna Parjanakam Shigra Meva Travitra So, your holy name should enter your ears. You should chant the holy name. But there should be no Varana Vyavadhan. Varana Vyavadhan means, you say, you say, Hari Bol, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. These two syllables you utter, you are guaranteed to go to spiritual world. Sakrudu charitam yena, harinit yakshara dvayam, baddha parikaras tena, moksha gavanam prati. If you have chanted the name Hari, Hari, then you are guaranteed to go to the spiritual world. And Hari, Harati, Papani, Dushta, Chitte, Rapi, Smrutaha, Anichya, Api, Sanspruhta, Dhatteve, Pavaka. Suppose I touch fire. And then what will happen? My hand will burn. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, if I touch fire, oh, all my hand will burn. So if I knowingly or unknowingly utter, hurry, 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 then all my sins will vanish. Chanketyam parihasyam va sthobam helanima va vai kuntha nama grahanam ashi shagaram. Vai means not, kuntha means anxiety. Bhagavan has no anxiety, so it's called vai kuntha, the place where Bhagavan resides. That place is also free from anxiety. That is also called Vaikuntha. So the name of Bhagwan is also Vaikuntha. The abode where Bhagwan resides is also Vaikuntha. 
So if you utter the name of Krishna or Vaikuntha, you become free from all the sins. But suppose you say Hati Kari, Hati Kari, Hati Kari. Hati Kari is also name of Bhagwan because her is coming and last syllable is Ri. But in between there are two uh, superfluous syllables, Tikari, Tika. So that will not purify you very quickly because the name, the syllables of Bhagwan's name, her and Ri are separated by some other syllable. So this Nama Bhas I mean, is, is beset with Varna Vyavadhan, some obstruction is coming. But if you chant uh, like haram, haram means in Muslims they say something impure, they say haram. Untouchable, they say haram. A Muslim man, he went to pass stool in the jungle. And as he was passing stool, one wild boar came. The wild boar is considered very impure by the Muslims. We consider wild boar to be very pure because he is like varade. Understand? If we get any soil or any dirt, uh, you know, which is um, uprooted by the big teeth of this wild boar, that, that soil or that clay is very useful. For yagya and all, it is considered very, very pure. Wild boar is considered very pure by Hindus because he is varade. Understand? And um, his hair also, bodily hair also considered very pure. But Muslims consider boar to be very impure. So a Muslim was passing stool in the jungle and one wild boar came to hit him from the back. And he called Haram, Haram. But wild boar killed him. So while dying he had chanted the name of Ram. Ha means O oh, Ram. Lovingly calling out Ram. Ha Ram. Prema And Ram is the name of Bhagwan. So calling out Haram, Haram, he was delivered. So Damshri, Damshri Dhanshtra Hatom Lecho Harami Ti Puna Puna Uktwa Pi Mukti Maatlo Ti Kim Puna Chodhya Agni. If unknowingly chanted the name of Ram, he was delivered. What will happen if you lovingly call out Ha Ram, Ha Krishna, Ha Govind, Ha Gopal, Ha Radha Raman, Ha Radha Nath. So that's why the sure process of getting Krishna Prem is chanting Krishna now loudly. And if you cannot chant, at least listen by your ears. At least be present in the Sankirtan party. Because the holy name will go to your ears anyways. So that's why you should give the advantage to the other living entities by doing loud Nama Sankirtan. So here it is told that the very life energy of this ninefold practice of bhakti comes from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, which is likened to a charming row of clouds. The nine kinds of bhakti just mentioned are endowed with the great power to cause pure love of Krishna, Krishna Prem to appear, as well as to grant service to him. Among the, these nine cross practices, Bhagavan's Nama Sankirtan is best of all. If one performs Nama Sankirtan while avoiding anartha such as offenses, that Nama Sankirtan will quickly and easily grant the enormous wealth of Prem. This is because the name of the Lord and Lord who is addressed by his name, Nam and Nami are constitutionally added to them. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the strength behind these nine processes of bhakti. That you should know. But why Nama Sankirtan is so powerful? Because there is no difference between Nam and Bhagwan. Uh, Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukta Abhinnatva Nama and Nami. There is no difference between the Nam and Bhagwan. Goswami Tulsidas has said, Kaha kahu lagi nama badai, Ramana sakata nama gunadai. Even Ram cannot glorify his holy name. Uh, there is no comparison to the holy name. Jnana masa tulitam cha tulayam, Premanaiva tulitam tulayam, Siddhireva tulitata tulayam, Krishna nama tulitam na tulayam. The mystic perfections and speculative knowledge, they are limited in nature. Their influence is limited. But Krishna Nam and Krishna Prem, they are unlimited. So, Nama Sankirtan, the power of Nama Sankirtan, there is a small pastime which I heard that once Devaki and Vasudev wanted to perform a very big sacrifice, fire sacrifice. So, they, they invited Narad and they told Narad that Narad go to all the Vaishnavas in the universe and invite them for this big fire sacrifice which Krishna is going to conduct along with Rukmini. Uh, so, as per the advice of Devaki and Vasudev, Narad went to invite all the Vaishnavas. But Devaki and Vasudev told Narad, Hey Narad, 
don't go to braj to don't invite any prajavasi understand because if they come krishna will be disturbed seeing them so don't go to braj and invite any prajavasi for fire sacrifice so but invite all the vaishnavas in the whole universe every vaishnava you should invite they should all come but narad muni is narad muni he was told not to go to invite anyone in braj but narad muni first went to braj only and he went to braj and he told nanda and nishada that oh yashoda maiya quickly give something whatever is cooked maybe yesterday scale prasadam is also okay yesterday chapati and sabji also okay it is still i have no problem but i am in a big rush big hurry i have to invite all the vaishnavas from the entire universe all the fortune gatherer systems for fire sacrifice which krishna is performing and this how he created a design in the heart of mother yashoda and krishna uh, mother yashoda and nanda maharaj to see krishna and he left it. that is narad so yashoda and uh, nanda maharaj thought that our son is performing fire sacrifice we have no invitation but we don't need an invitation if the son is performing fire sacrifice then do mother and father need invitation if son is getting married do mother and father need invitation if your son or daughter is getting married you don't need an invitation who will invite you you are the mother and father you are supposed to invite the whole world so they went to meet krishna where krishna was performing fire sacrifice there was a big hall and the hall inside the hall there were uh, gate keepers were there and they were told don't allow anyone inside without checking their id who they are ask their names and their relationship with krishna then only with proper scrutiny allow anyone uh, and only uh, so when nanda neshoda went to the gate of the fire sacrifice arena they were stopped promptly by the gate keepers and arjun and bhim were guarding this sacrifice arena from the roof they had climbed on the roof of this sacrifice arena and they were with bow and uh, arrow and also with the mace bhim and arjun were guarding so no one will attack the fire sacrifice arena all of a sudden they saw uh, krishna this nanda and neshoda coming to the fire sacrifice arena so at the door the door the door keeper asked that who are you then they told we are mother and father of krishna this is nanda maharaj i am yashoda then they said that your name is not on not on the list of the mothers because here the, we got the list is that uh, devaki is there rohini is there other queens of vasudeva are there in the fathers list we have vasudeva maharaj but there is no nanda maharaj name is not there and and uh, yashoda's name is also not there in the list of mothers so we, we are not allowed to enter we have to stop here so when door keeper stopped nanda and yashoda both of them became very angry he even told uh, arjun that i am going down and smashing that door keeper to pieces they are such saintly persons great devotees and they are not even allowed inside the sacrificial arena this is big injustice but arjun said don't interfere in this past times these are very high level past times with krishna's mother and father and krishna and we should not interfere in them let just see what happens now there is some leela is going to take place here so they kept quiet <clears throat> and then yashoda she thought that i have brought fresh butter churned by my own hands from vrindavan krishna has not eaten the eaten the butter from my hand for so many days let me offer him butter if he can, if they don't allow me inside let me call him here only and she began to call out like her old old habit govind damo darama daveti govind damo darama daveti o kanaiya o lala o nanda lala o yashoda dulal please come please come take lala kanaiya take my take the butter so krishna was about to offer the purna hoti last offering only few offerings were left and then he would get the complete result of the fire sacrifice um and the priest they told krishna that don't run now but krishna said please hurry up my mother is calling me she has brought freshly churned butter for me i must eat it i am so hungry why don't you why you are chanting so many mantras i have no time for this for completing the sacrifice he said just wait 2 minutes just one ahuti and we are done then krishna is 
well was tied to the well of Rukmini. He untied that well, his uttariya, upper garment. And he ran, calling out, Mother, 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 Mother. And he went and sat in the lap of Mother Yashoda. And he began to eat the butter from her hand. And there were tears from both their eyes were flowing. Krishna, he forgot to perform the last Purnahuti also. He said, if I don't get the full benefit of fire sacrifice, no problem. But my mother, she should not wait for me. I must go and see her. So that is the power of Nama Sankirtan. That's why Krishna says, Naham Tishthami Vaikunthe Yogi Nam Rudayo Viva Madhvakta Yatra Gayanti Tatra Tishthami Narada I don't stay in Vaikuntha. I don't stay where the yogis are there because there is no Nama Sankirtan. But I stay in the place where my devotees are very sweetly, sweetly calling my names. Um, those names attract me. Mm. So we should try to do Nama Sankirtan with great love and affection. And very quickly, Prem will come. What Nama Sankirtan? Shri Krishna Gopala Hare Mukunda Govinda He Nanda Kishora Krishna Ashriya Shoda Tanaya Prasida Shri Ballavi Jeevan Radhikesha Like Gopakumar was doing. Uh, Shri Krishna Gopal Hare Mukunda. Progressively higher and higher names. Till it is the highest name. Ballavi Jeevan Radhikesha. Understand? But these names, this Nama Sankirtan which Gopakumar did, not everyone can do. Like we do sometimes Nam Kirtan. Radha Ramana Hari Bol. Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Bol. But this, this Nama Sankirtan, will Yashoda be able to sing these names? Not possible. How can Yashoda call Krishna Radha Raman? Not possible for her. It will be against her rasa to call him Radha Raman. That's why Mahaprabhu gave us one Mahamantra, which any devotee of any rasa, whether he is devotee of Krishna, Ram, Vara, Kalki, Matsya, Purma, Narsingha, and in Dasaras, Sakharas, Vatsaras, Madhuras, Swakya, Parakya, any rasa he may be, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. So this is the topmost Mahamantra for Sankirtan. Loudly, like Mahaprabhu in the Rathyatra times used to loudly call out these names. Hare Krishna, Tiyuchya, Spurita Rasa, Noa, Naam, Ganana, Prithi, Granth, Shreni, Kati, Subhaka, Sutra, Jwala, Kara, Vishal, Akshwa, Dirghar, Gala, Nijay, Yugala, Khilanchita, Bhuja, Asa, Chaitanya, Kim, Me, Pundra, Pudra, Shurya, Mahaprabhu used to chant these names, Hare Krishna Mantra, on the beads and also in Kirtan, without counting also used to sing these names. There is no hard and fast rule for doing this, chanting this mantra or Kirtan of this mantra. It's the most beneficial mantra in the world. I think it's getting late now for you, so don't want to keep you waiting for eternity. Anchakalpaturubhashyakrupasindhi vajaparjana pavanibhu vashmidhujyanamana. If you have any questions, please shoot them, ask me. Understand? Hare Krishna. I think all are sleepy now. Okay. Yeah, it's here quarter past ten, so it must be even late for me. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare. 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 Going down. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna